What's going on, combat sports fans? John Ramdeen here in the FN studios, and this is Fight News Now Extra. Making headlines today, John Jones gets his next opponent, and he is not of Swedish descent. The UFC releases the son of a Hall of Famer, and FN inks a deal with Canada's most successful mixed martial arts organization. That's what's going on in the news today. Now we dig a bit deeper. While it looks like UFC light heavyweight champion John Jones already has his next opponent, and it isn't the man that he just battled this past Saturday in Alexander Gustafsson. Instead, the 205-pound king is set to take on Brazilian bomber Glover Teixeira in New Jersey on Super Bowl Saturday. Jones stated that he clearly defeated the European at UFC 165 and feels that there is no need for an immediate rematch. Teixeira is undefeated thus far in the UFC and is riding a 20-fight winning streak. It seems that you're screwed if your last name is Couture and you have anything to do with the UFC. The world's biggest fight promotion has released Ryan Couture from his contract after losing back-to-back -back fights. The UFC has had a long-standing battle with the 31-year-old's father, MMA pioneer and two-division champion Randy Couture, and one can only imagine the decision was at least in part due to previous comments made by the MMA legend regarding the UFC's practices. And it is with great pleasure that FN announces our new partnership with long-running mixed martial arts promotion Maximum Fighting Championship. The Edmonton-based organization has been around since 2001 and has delivered close to 40 events for fans, which have included bouts with Patrick Cote, Ryan Jimmo, Talos Leitis, Pat Healy, Bobby Lashley, and Ben Henderson, just to name a few. Welcome to the FN Studios. I am John Ramdean alongside Robin Black. And we have a very special guest today. It is the MFC promoter, Mark Pavlich. Thank you so much for joining us. And we have some big news in the world of mixed martial arts and Fight Network and MFC as we've entered into a partnership with the MFC. You must be excited as we are. I, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I mean, I think it's, um, I'm with my people now. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's something that people don't understand. It's, you have to understand the business of mixed martial arts, and there's lots of TV people out there that think they understand it, but they don't. And, We've you know, said that for years. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, but, it's, but it's true, though, and the Fight Network is that you know, brand that does understand it, and it only makes sense to have the largest mixed martial art organization in the country on the Fight Network. Can we're you practically give us related now. Yeah, we're actually yeah, we are related, and thank God we are, right? <laughs> and, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and the funny thing is, is that, you know, people scream for it, they want it, and, you know, the Fight Network's now going to give it to the people in Canada. Uh, tell us some of the details for fans that have followed the MFC for a long time. Uh, what can they expect here on FN? Well, don't forget, Fight Network also did, bought the whole library of the Maximum Fighting Championship. Awesome. So you have to understand, that's huge. Just in that alone, that people, you know, don't understand. Like, you're talking MFC 1 yeah. in 2000 to MFC now and then an MFC in the future. So MFC will only play on the Fight Network in Canada. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, just talk about your role as a promoter and trying to build the MFC brand. Obviously people know it's the biggest brand, one of the longest standing brands here in Canada. Is the goal to uh, get exposure globally for you or is it just focus on, on what's working right now? No, my, my, it, my it's, the goal's always been the same, right? It, it, might, it takes longer in our industry maybe than other industries. I've always had the philosophy of crawling instead of running and, and that's what's made us where we are today, the biggest brand of MMA in the country. At the same time as I think it's important to focus on the new deal with the Fight Network, um, how I could become a great, you know, kind of facilitator in, in certain avenues to make even the Fight Network bigger. You know, that's my job. My job isn't just to provide footage. I just want to be a great ambassador for the Fight Network. And talk about to your the response from your community. Obviously, you're based, you, you call yourself a Canadian brand, but you have a home uh, in Edmonton. What's the response from people around? Do they, do they understand what the MFC is? I mean, people that might not have been exposed to mixed martial arts in the past, they've seen the brand now over the last number of years. Uh, what, what are people saying? I, I think most people now look at the MFC as, as a, 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 the Breitling brand of MMA. Mm. If the UFC is the Rolex, we're the Breitling. We are an alternative choice. I've never strived to be like the UFC. I think that's what's always bothered the UFC to a certain degree. I've never bowed down to them. I acknowledge they're the biggest brand of MMA in the world. At the same time as we fight in a ring, not a cage. Mm. We have red gloves, not black gloves, right? Yeah. I mean, I've done everything in my power to make it different. And Canadian people should understand that, right? Mm. It's, it's, it's really important. I never said, oh, I'm, listen, we have American broadcasting partners as well, Mark Cuban, Ryan Seacrest, mm -hmm. they're our business partners. But I have never, never, never went away from the fact that I'm a Canadian. I'm not like a rock band that goes, hey, I have to go to the United States to become big. I am big here. I'm big in Canada, which is very rare. 
you know, it's, uh, something we can really relate to is you're obsessed about what you do. And John and I and everybody here yeah. at this network is that way too. When we meet some people and it's all we want to talk about is what we work in, they think we're crazy. Do people think you're crazy? Um, I, I think people know that I'm, 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 I'm a careful crazy. You know, I'm not... I'm, I'm just crazy about this. I've always, I always have been. Um, I, I have this reoccurring dream. My father, you know, who was in the NHL, he says, you know, most pioneers in their sport or anything they do go broke, Mark. And I, I remember that because I mm. basically started, I was one of the first people ever in Canada to start this. And I, I still wake up every morning thinking of my father saying that to me, you mm. know, because he's like, don't go broke as a pioneer in yeah. this sport. What drives you to continue to succeed? Is it lining your pockets? Is it just b building something from day one and still having it around and something that people say, wow, I I've never been to an event like that. What a, a great show. Or is it just being able to provide for your family? John, I don't, I don't think that lining your pockets will, will wake you up mm -hmm. at four in the morning and make you stay up till three in the morning. I, I don't, I really don't. I don't believe that that's, that's something that you know, I, I mean, that does become a factor along the way. But when you start this, I mean, I remember doing our first show in 2000. I, I didn't think about making one dollar. Yeah. I didn't do that till the second show, third show, fourth show. And then one day I was like, I wonder if I can make a living doing this. But my initial thing was just the passion of watching a Japanese pan craze tape on VHS. Yeah. And I, I was like, that was it. I never watched. I, seriously, I never watched other sports again yeah. after I watched no, it. No, we relate to that, man. You know? And um, let's just talk about this card coming up uh, on October 4th. What can fans expect from the card? Uh, you, you see guys like Curtis DeMars, who's returning to mixed sure. martial all arts. Yeah. yeah, all action. You have Alvi, which we thought was going to be in the main event. That's not happening as he's fighting south, the undefeated guy. Is that the goal when you're, when you're trying to pick up fighters? You look at their backstory, you look at their history, or do you say, you know what, I don't care what their records are. These guys go out and bang and entertain. Our formula is different now, John. I'm looking for someone that can sell fights too. If a guy's 10 and 0, that's fantastic. We have guys in the MFC that are 10 and 0, 14 and 1. But at the same time, as I look at this now too, I look if the guy tweets lots. I look yeah. if he Facebooks lots. I look if he has his own YouTube channel. I look if he can promote the fight, not just fight the fight and go, hey, I'm gonna do my talking in the ring. That doesn't sell tickets. I need guys to promote their own fights individually. That's very important to take this to the next level. And just remember, all the action goes down on October 4th at the Shaw Conference Center in Edmonton, Alberta at his MFC 38 behind enemy lines.